Zubat, the poison and flying type bat Pokemon from Generation 1 that appears everywhere at all times. Zubat gets a lot of flack for being perhaps the most annoying Pokemon of all time. But today, I want to put Zubat through the ultimate challenge in order to allow it to try and redeem itself. Or at least, that's how I try to justify this insanity. Today, we're going to be answering the timeless question, is it possible to beat Pokemon Red and Blue with just a Zubat? To answer this, we're going to be going on a wild journey, so sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, and let's have fun with it. Let's go over the ground rules we'll be playing by. Number one, we can obviously only use Zubat in battle. We will need Pokemon to perform some HM moves for us so they can be in our party but can't be sent into battle under any circumstances. And that even includes switching them in and out to rid Zubat of confusion or to restore its accuracy. Second, we cannot use any glitches, cheats, or exploits. The only exception to this rule is of course a Game Shark code needed to change our starter Pokemon to a level 5 Zubat. Rule number 3 is a tricky one. We can only use healing items that we actually find on the ground, meaning we can't buy healing items from the Pokemart, and we can't use any items on Zubat during actual battles, meaning no potions, X-Attack, etc. For some reason, I'm feeling sadistic enough to make this as challenging as possible, and I don't even know if we'll make it past the first gym. Yay! Viewers, I dedicate my suffering to your entertainment. With that being said, let's look at what kind of Pokemon we're working with. In terms of total base stats, Zubat is the fourth worst unevolved Pokemon in the entire game after Caterpie, Weedle, and Magikarp, with a base stat total of 245, which is worse than the likes of even Pidgey, Rattata, Paris, you name it. For reference, the most mediocre, fully evolved Pokemon I can think of, Golduck, has a base stat total of 500, meaning we're working with less than half of a Golduck and 75 less base stats than its terrible pre-evolution, Psyduck. Sorry, Psyduck. Zubat's best stats, if you can call them that, are its speed and attack. In terms of moves, Zubat doesn't get a whole lot better. In fact, it's quite limited. It starts off with Leech Life, a 20 base power move, followed by Supersonic to Confuse, Bite with 60 base power, Confuse Ray to Confuse with better accuracy, and Stab or same type attack bonus Wing Attack at 35 base power. In terms of TMs, Zubat can learn Toxic to poison the opponent, and Mega Drain would be very useful if we can get our hands on it, but that's about it. Pretty poor overall, and essentially no stab for its poison typing, which is terrible anyway since there are no fairies in this game, and all the grass types that it would be super effective against are all part poison anyway, with the lone exception of Tangela. And I can tell you right now, we will not be seeing many Tangela. With all this being said, and Zubat's sheer terribleness having been expanded upon in detail, let's begin the challenge. Upon picking Zubat from Professor Oak, I decide to name it Leechy since this thing is inevitably going to be leeching my life away. I decide to pick the Charmander slot so that our rival chooses Squirtle. Although Squirtle won't be the toughest starter to face off against initially, eventually it will become the most difficult as a Blastoise since it will get some powerful super effective ice type moves. In battling Blue for the first time, Zubat demonstrates its utter terribleness and loses. But thankfully, this is the only non-optional battle that we can lose and still progress through the game. So, we decide to give Zubat a second chance. Traveling through Route 1, I decide to battle some Pokémon to see what our potential for grinding is. I start off by battling a mere Pidgey and realize there's no way I can take one of these things out. Immediately the panic sets in and I wonder if this run will be possible at all. If I can take on any of these super weak Route 1 Pokemon. Thankfully, Rattata is possible to take down, so we're saved for now. After returning Oak's parcel, we can head towards Route 2 after Viridian City where Caterpie also appear. After a quick analysis, I find out that at level 3, Caterpies give 22 experience, Pidgey gives 23 experience, and Rattata gives 24 experience. Plus, Rattata can actually go up to level 5 on this route, so at this point, this seems to be the highest experience we can reliably get. While grinding, I quickly find out that Leech Life only has 15 power points, so frequent trips to the Pokemon Center are necessary. Couple this with having to run away from Pidgeys, and this was a mess of a grinding scenario, but it's definitely necessary given what lies ahead in Pewter City. At level 10, Zubat learns Supersonic, which is helpful against Pidgeys, but it only has 55% accuracy, so kind of pointless and unreliable 
viable at this point, but it will perhaps come in handy later on as another way of getting damage off. After grinding a bit, I decide to head to Viridian Forest next. We could potentially go to Route 22, which is the route that leads to the Pokemon League, but the only things there are Nidoran and Spearow, neither of which are great for our purposes of grinding. There is an optional battle with our rival there too, however he starts with a level 9 Pidgey and we can't really deal with that right now, although it would have been some good experience. Our first trainer battle goes surprisingly smoothly. We face a bug catcher and Leech Life turns out to be super effective on Weedle, which is actually one of the Pokemon I was worried about getting past. This is very strange since nowadays bug and poison types would resist Leech Life. Apparently this is due to the fact that poison is for some reason weak to bug in Gen 1. Oh well, works for us. Against the Caterpie we do run out of power points, but thankfully Supersonic saves us after missing like five times. After going back to heal in Viridian, I remember that there's a hidden item behind this cut tree. Potions are especially important for between battles since not only can you not buy potions yet from the Pokemart, but we're also not allowed to buy them for the purpose of this challenge anyway. Back in Viridian Forest, we encounter our second trainer who has a Kakuna. Thankfully, Kakuna and Metapod can't attack and just use Harden repeatedly, making it a tedious but easy kill, and giving us a whopping 106 experience. Unfortunately, in Pokemon Blue, the version that we're playing, you only have a 10% chance of finding either a Weedle or Kakuna in the wild in Viridian Forest, whereas Metapod and Caterpie combined are an 85% chance, but those odds are reversed in Pokemon Red. I guess I picked the wrong version since we're only super effective against the Weedle line. Whoops, that would have been great for grinding. Oh, well. I decide to take on all the trainers in the forest and any wild Pokemon we encounter to see what level we end up by the time we leave. Along the way we find an antidote which causes me to realize, hey, we won't need to worry about poison for this entire challenge. That's good at least. I also find a Pikachu which I thought was pretty cool since it only has a 5% chance of appearing in Viridian Forest in red and blue. Nearing the end of the forest I pick up another potion and an additional potion that this trainer had dropped in front of him and was looking for. Sorry dude. Upon reaching the end of the forest, I realize that we're only at level 11. So much for the trainers helping us out a bunch. I know that we're nowhere near being ready for the gym challenge up ahead, especially since Brock's gym specializes in rock-type Pokemon, which we can't do much of anything against with just this Zubat. So I decide to stay here and grind for a while. And given that we can't find Weedles or Kakunas for diddly squat, I mean a while. I never want to see another Caterpie or Metapod ever again. Thankfully, Pewter City is nearby so I can routinely heal up Zubat and its low PP on Leech Life. Upon hitting level 14 after about half an hour more of grinding, an idea dawns on me. What if I try battling the first trainer in Brock's gym? I remember he has a relatively high level Diglett and Sandshrew. If I can find a way to take out the Diglett but then lose to the Sandshrew, maybe I could repeatedly get a lot of experience. So I try it out and I do manage to take down the Diglett which isn't capable of damaging me much with Scratch and it nets me 190 experience, which is the equivalent of about 5 high level Rattatas which I can't always find anyway. He then sends out Sandshrew and uses Sand Attack to lower my accuracy, and I realize we can just spam the already terrible 55% accuracy Supersonic until it kills me with Scratch. Perfect! This is my new grinding method as we try and hit level 15 for Bite for Brock, which is 60 base power instead of 20 base power Leech Life. Eventually my Supersonic actually does hit Sandshrew pretty hard and I accidentally take it out, although it does bring us to level 16. At this point I'm doubtful we can even take on Brock's Geodude and Onyx, but I give it a go anyway, not least because this guy takes me directly to the gym to prevent me from heading to Route 3 to do some grinding against other trainers. Thanks dude. My strategy here is to immediately use Supersonic and confuse them, then chip away at their health with Bite, our most powerful attack. The Geodude does go down amazingly enough, and I'm worried about our health leading into the Onyx. We do barely any damage to it, but I get the confusion off at least, and then I realize that I have to keep using Leech Life to at least get health back. Between misses, critical hits, and successful confusion, I have one of the luckiest battles I think I've ever had, and we do end up taking down the Onyx and defeating Brock. First gym badge, down. So at this point I'm feeling pretty optimistic as we head towards Route 3. We beat our first major challenge, got some good prize money, and we now have an attack that is three times stronger than what we were using previously, has much more power points, and has a chance to flinch. Route 3 has a ton of trainers, eight in fact, so it was really good for grinding and getting money and I only had to go back and heal two times. We next reach Mount Moon, which is the infamous domain of Zubats. But I'm feeling pretty confident we can show them who the King Zubat is around here. Along our journey through the cave, we pick up a rare candy and a couple of potions too. We encounter another trainer who's taking the Zubat route. 
<laughs> Not a chance, my guy. I've got a Zubat that's practically on steroids at this point. I also find an HP up, but I decide that as part of this challenge, we're not going to use any vitamins. It's fairly complicated, but in Gen 1, EVs work really strangely. You can get a maximum of 65,535 EVs in each stat. Vitamins add 2,560 to a singular stat's EV, but cannot raise a stat over 25,600. For the purpose of this challenge, I figure we just won't use any, even though they are limited in their use, since they could disproportionately make our Zubat stronger during the first half of the game or so. In the cave, we also find our first member of Team Rocket, who has a Sand Shrew that we can't do a whole lot of damage against, but thankfully a crit makes the process easier. In doing so, we grow to level 21 and learn Confuse Ray, which has a 100% accuracy instead of Supersonic's 55%. I have a feeling this is going to be very useful. We also encounter a Hiker who has two Geodudes and an Onyx and although it was a very tedious and close battle, we did make it through. At this point, Zubat tried to evolve since it's now level 22, and I'm like, nah, I don't think so, Chief. Not on my watch. And he was all like, Zura! or whatever sound Zubats make when they're mad at their trainer for limiting their potential. Upon leaving Mount Moon, we pick up the dome f Okay, fine, we'll take the Helix fossil, settle down. Praise Lord Helix and all, you know. We next arrive in Cerulean City, and I make sure to pick up the hidden rare candy above the first house. Just before entering the Nugget Bridge, we are of course challenged by our rival, who actually beat me the first time due to his Pidgeotto's sand attack, which made me miss pretty much everything. It was at this point that I realized the value of being able to switch Pokemon, which we don't have the ability to do in this challenge. Any accuracy lowering moves are a huge problem for us. The second challenge goes much smoother since Sand Attack doesn't hit us, and we finish the battle with 23 HP. At this point, I'm briefly reminded by Blue's Abra of how much of a threat Psychic-type Pokemon are going to be during this challenge. We pass through the Nugget Bridge with few issues, but on Route 25 leading to Bill's house, there were a couple of tough trainers. There were a couple of hikers on this route with Geodudes, and one guy with a level 17 Onyx, but Confuse Ray is proving to be very helpful. Still very tedious to face these rock types, but definitely more manageable now. Along the way, we also run into a youngster with Slowpoke, and its high defense combined with super effective stab confusion causes it to be a major threat. I try to confuse it, but it lands two confusions and takes us out. But the second time around, I have a bit of a luckier go with it. After being brought down all the way to 10 HP by the other trainers, I manage a super effective leech life and make it to our next destination. After helping the creator of the Pokemon PC system, Bill, with, um, whatever he's gotten himself into, human Pokemon hybridization or something, it's time to take on our second gym leader, Misty. Don't forget that you can leave Bill's house and come back to check his PC for the three Evolution Dex entries if you're interested. Now, Misty having a water-type gym is not of major concern, and we make it past the trainers in her gym with little issue. Misty's Staryu is pretty easy to take care of since Bubble isn't able to do much against us, but I was really worried about Starmie's psychic typing. Thankfully, Misty's Starmie doesn't have any stab super effective psychic moves, so while being tough to take down, we manage with a combination of Confuse Ray and low damage output, yet super effective, HP healing Leech Life, which allows us to take our second gym badge. During the battle, Zubat does learn Wing Attack, which, even with Stab taken into account, is weaker in terms of power than Bite, doing only around 87% as much damage neutrally, but it will be very helpful in the future for super effective type coverage. Our next stop is going to be Vermilion City, but we have to pass through some trainers on Route 6 to get there, and some of these trainers were surprisingly tough. We have a bit of foreshadowing shadowing as to our next major challenge with this girl that has a Pikachu, which reminds me of the electric types that I have to face for the next gym. Another bug trainer also spots us, and here I am expecting a couple Weedles or something, but he heats in a fully evolved level 20 Butterfree out of nowhere, and the darn thing takes me out with a combination of Stun Spore to fully paralyze me, and super effective Confusion, even with the power of our stab super effective Wing Attack. After rematching and defeating that cursed trainer, I then have to deal with a girl who has a Pidgey army, and every single one of them uses sand attack, so this battle takes like 10 minutes. Really shows how much accuracy moves can affect a solo playthrough like this. After finally reaching Vermilion City, I decide to travel east to Route 11 to take out all the trainers for more XP since I know that we're going to need it soon. All of the trainers were relatively easy. I did have to heal a couple of times at the Pokemon Center, but there was one trainer who busted out a Magneton out of nowhere and took us out with a super effective Thundershock. I challenged this trainer again and I'm like, oh god, I'm going to lose again, but at 10 HP we were able to manage a lucky crit with Bite and take it out. Whew. 
After those couple of traumatic routes, I realize we're probably not up to par at the moment, so I decide to hit up Diglett's Cave to do some grinding. Now this is a great grinding spot since these relatively high level Diglets provide some good experience, but sometimes you can even find Dugtrio as strong as level 31 in here. And neither of these Pokemon can do much against Zubat, so I'm able to get him up to level 33 before heading to the SSN to defeat every single trainer that's trying to enjoy their cruise. Although it did take a while, the trainers on the SSN weren't too bad. A couple of Pikachus here and there, but we also pick up another rare candy and surprisingly enough a max potion which could be useful later on when Zubat has some more HP that requires it. Our rival of course challenges us towards the end of the journey to get the cut HM from the captain and it was kind of a rough battle in terms of luck. His Pidgeotto gets a sand attack off right away which makes this battle kind of risky. His Abra is now a Kadabra which scared me a bit but luckily we swept right through it. Thanks to our lowered accuracy we got three misses on Wartortle but we survived with 37 HP to spare. Overall, not a bad time with the rival so far, but I'm really fearing later evolutions and additions to his party as you can well imagine. Well, it's time. We're off to one of the gyms I fear most. To get to the gym in the first place, we need cut, so we need to grab our first of two HM slaves that we'll use in this game. The first one that we can go for is one that can learn both cut and fly, Farfetch'd. In Pokemon Red and Blue, Farfetch'd is only available through a trade in Vermilion City. Simply go into this house and talk to the girl inside, and all she requests is a Spearow, which, if you don't have one, can be found on Route 11 directly east of Vermilion City. Luckily, I find a Spearow on my first encounter, weaken it, almost kill it with a crit, throw one Pokeball, and and it's ours. We complete the trade for ducks, the far-fetched, and teach it cut. Now we finally have access to what I'm imagining will be our toughest challenge yet, or at least right up there with Brock, the Vermilion City Gym led by none other than the electric type gym leader, Lieutenant Surge. The trainers in Lieutenant Surge's gym, though challenging with their super effective electric moves, are manageable and we finish them off with 30 HP before healing. At this point I'm like, hmm, maybe we can do this. It's time to challenge Lieutenant Surge. His Voltorb misses its attack and gets taken out and we're able to take out the Pikachu in one hit with Bite. Feeling confident, I just go for the bite on Raichu and it does a bit less than half. He then uses Thunderbolt and nearly takes me out in one hit. I go for one more bite, hoping for either a crit or a flinch, but nope. My hopes and dreams were swiftly crushed and we lose our first challenge. The second time around, the Voltorb misses again and we get to the Raichu with no problems. He uses X speed on the Raichu this time and I was like, oh, he didn't attack, we've got this. Not realizing, oh, wait, he's going to be faster on the third turn. At this point, I try to strategize, thinking we're a two-hit KO for him, so we have to have Voltorb miss on the first turn, take it out, take the Pikachu out, then get really lucky with either a crit or a flinch with bite, or possibly confuse the Raichu and hope for the best. On the third battle, we flinch the Voltorb, and I'm thinking, man, oh man, that Voltorb is not having a good day. It just can't hit us. This time, I decide to try to confuse the Raichu, but it breaks through and then crits and one-hit KOs us. So at this point, I'm thinking we'll need to grind to get one more level so we can at least two-hit KO the Raichu, since it seems we're just off of being able to do so at the moment, and that would really help. This time, I'm super confident, since we can two-hit KO it with the extra level, and we crit the Voltorb, this poor thing, but then Raichu crits again. Finally, during the next battle, the Raichu finally hurts itself in confusion, and we painstakingly win our third gym badge after five or six attempts. We now make our way back up to Cerulean where we can now use Cut to access routes 9 and 10. We'll actually be able to get our second and final HM slave here, but we can't catch it yet without the Super Rod, which is found later. We face many trainers on these routes, including a hiker who has yet another Onyx. It has Screech to lower our defense, Bind, which hits consecutive turns without us being able to move, and super effective Stab Rock Throw. Thankfully, we're able to confuse and flinch it with Bite pretty consistently, so it doesn't do too much damage. Definitely scary, though. We face another hiker in the south part of the route, where his first Pokemon, a Geodude, uses Self-Destruct out of nowhere to bring us down to 22 HP but we have an epic battle with his subsequent level 21 Onyx to very luckily win with 9 HP left when we really should have lost. After facing a few more trainers, we make it to the Pokemon Center with 19 HP and with Zubat at level 40. I think this is definitely the first time I've had a Pokemon at level 40 shortly after I got the third gym badge in the game, and thank god because we evidently need it. 
Now here I ran into a dilemma because for Rock Tunnel we ideally should have Flash so we can see what the heck we're doing. But I said that I'd only be using two HM slaves at the outset and the second is Slowpoke which can be found in the water on Route 10 and can use Flash. But the Super Rod which is needed to get Slowpoke in the first place can only be obtained after Rock Tunnel. There are Voltorb on this route but another problem is that we're not allowed to catch any more Pokemon as for the rules of the challenge and the TM for Flash is given to you way back near Pewter City by one of Professor Professor Oak's aides who requires you to have 10 Pokemon registered in your Pokedex. Given all of these complications, I decide, you know what, we'll do it live. Not only is Rock Tunnel filled with, you guessed it, our worst nightmare, Rock Pokemon, but now we can't see anything. This was the absolute worst. Upon entering the cave, I thought my game started freezing since I couldn't move for a little bit, but lo and behold, it turns out that a trainer that I couldn't see at all had stopped us. Oh boy. Then he sends out a Cubone, lowers our attack three times with Growl before using Slowpoke, which has super effective Confusion. Thankfully our super effective Leech Life is able to do something to it and give us back a little HP, and we survive the first battle in this cursed cave with 7 HP. Back to the Pokemon Center it is. The very next trainer we face has a level 25 Slowpoke. Dear Lord. Between other growling Cubones, trainers with Onyxes that we can barely touch yet have Screech and Bind, trainers with multiple Geodudes with Rock Throw, Defense Curl, and Self Destruct, even Gravelers for Pete's sake. One of the trainers even says, my Pokemon techniques will make you cry, and I was like, yes they will. <laughs> oh god. Then another trainer just has to painfully remind us when I think I'm getting close to the end, this tunnel goes a long way. Honestly, I just don't want to talk about the rest of this place at all. Just know, we got through it, and it took around two hours with about three deaths, meaning traveling all the way through again in the darkness, and one potion that I had to use between battles. Zubat is now at level 44. You're welcome. Upon reaching Lavender Town, there's not much we can do here, so I decide that we should really start tackling the issue of getting our second HM slave, Slowpoke. Problem is, I really don't want to go all the way down through and back again through Rock Tunnel just to get to Route 10. So I come up with an alternate plan, thinking I'm all smart, to go south to Route 12 to get our Super Rod because there is another place we can get Slowpoke. I do some major grinding against all the trainers on the route while we're there, but eventually remember that the Super Rod guy is in the southern part of the route, which is still blocked off by a Snorlax. I cancel my plans and head west from Lavender Town and grind against the many trainers on Route 7, bringing Zubat to level 47. Our next objective is the Rocket Hideout in the Celadon Game Corner, and along the way we find a rare candy and battle a ton of Rocket members who aren't too challenging. We also find two TMs that Zubat could potentially use, but Razor Wind's lower accuracy and Double Edge's recoil damage make them not really worth using. The final two Rocket Grunts have Sand Slash and Arbok, and they bring our health down below half, so I make sure to heal for the final battle. Now Giovanni is one of the trainers I'm terrified of, because he has Rock Pokemon and many others that we can't do a whole lot of damage to, but thankfully in this battle at least we have very good luck and it still takes us below half. Our next stop is Erica's gym which I'm thinking will be quite easy. Zubat can't get poisoned and Zubat's stab wing attack is super effective on almost everything in the gym. Luckily Erica's victory bell misses rap which actually could have caused some trouble, but the Tangela can't do anything against us so we take it out in two hits and we get a crit on her vile plume. This is definitely going to be the easiest major battle we have in this game and we kind of knew that from the outset. Four badges down, four to go. Before we leave Celadon, we're going to have to hit up the Celadon department store for a couple of things. First, we'll go to the rooftop to pick up a fresh water for the guards so they'll let us through the gate to Saffron later on. Now a couple of key notes here. First, these drinks are very helpful when it comes to healing between battles, and on the fifth floor there are a bunch of really useful X battle items and vitamins for when you're doing a crazy challenge like this. But we're not going to touch those because we are clinically insane. Additionally, there are Poke Dolls here which you can use to help skip past the final ghost in Lavender Tower if you don't have the Sylph Scope. Back at Lavender Tower, our rival shows up and decides to battle us in the middle of what is essentially a graveyard, real classy, and his Pidgeotto yet again lands Sand Attack and gets a crit on us, but the battle is still overall fairly easy. Throughout Lavender Tower and battling the weird, terrifying, possessed people, Ghost types are tougher to deal with since Bite is normal type in this generation, so we have to use the slightly weaker Wing Attack instead. But their defense is still so low, so it's not a huge problem. Along the way, we do find another 
another rare candy. Towards the end of the tower, we do get very lucky against the Marowak and Rockus Drowsies, and thankfully we survive with 44 HP. We then return to Mr. Fuji's house where he gives us the Poke Flute, which we can now use to wake the sleeping Snorlax that's preventing us from going further in the game, and also from getting the Super Rod, which we need for Slowpoke. Since we can't catch it, I decide we might as well try to battle and take down the Snorlax since it does give a lot of XP. I got super scared initially because I realized that we didn't heal, but it ends up hitting itself in confusion three times in a row, so we're all good. Next, we head down south a bit to grab the Super Rod, then back to Celadon to fish in this little pond in front of this elderly person's house to find a Slowpoke, our last HM Pokemon. I hope they don't mind. I only had two Great Balls at this point, so I had to be super cautious with the second one. Zubat's way too strong, so I could confused it and spammed Confuse Ray until it hurt itself enough to make catching it easier. Thankfully, the second Great Ball worked, and that's it for catching Pokemon for us. Next, we go west from Celadon to wake up and battle the second Snorlax, which causes us some more trouble, but we still manage it fairly easily, getting Zubat to level 53. We'll take a brief trip north using Cut in order to get the Fly HM, which we teach to Farfetch'd. This dude right here is impressed with our resolve being able to find this hidden path. Thank you, sir. I'll be sure to continue illegally trespassing in the future. At this point, I realized that we'll need the bike for this next part, so I have Farfetch'd fly us back to Cerulean to finally redeem our bike voucher. This shady man is not getting one million Poké Dollars out of me, so we're couponing it up in here. Karen to the max. Now we're ready to head towards Fuchsia City by first grinding our way through Cycling Road, which has a ton of trainers who have poison types such as Weezing and Muck. They have high defense and are very hard to take down, but they can't do a whole lot to Zubat since he's also poison type. There was one exception though a muck that had minimized and that came very close to taking us out because Zubat couldn't hit the darn thing, but we barely survived on 10 HP and could go heal afterwards. They also have some strong fighting types like Primeape and Machoke, which we can take out pretty easily with Wing Attack. Lots of experience gained though. After Cycling Road, we pass through the small Route 18, which is full of bird trainers, and unfortunately, I had run out of power points for Bite, so I was stuck using Wing Attack against flying Pokemon, leading us to yet another close call with a level 34 Dojirio. After two close calls and one Pokemon Center trip, we make it to Fuchsia City, now at level 56. We complete the Safari Zone sequence of returning the Warden's Golden Teeth to get him to stop speaking utter gibberish. Oh, and to get the Surf and Strength HMs, literally with 7 steps to spare out of the 500 that you are granted in the Safari Zone. During this, I found a Kangaskhan and Chansey as my first two Safari Zone encounters, by the way, which was really crazy. And yes, I tried and failed to catch the latter, just for the lols. Ha! We teach both HMs to Slowpoke, pick up the rare candy in the Warden's house, and get ready for our next gym challenge against Koga the Poison Master. In the meantime, this guy in the Pokemon Center lectures us about how we shouldn't just invest everything into one Pokemon. Ha! <laughs> Leading into Koga's gym, I'm like, eh, this won't be too bad, similar to Cycling Rogue with Poison types, where it will take a while, but they can't do much damage on me. Then, I face the first trainer, and BAM, a level 38 Hypno that uses Psychic and absolutely destroys Zubat. Um, okay, change of plan, this is gonna be a lot harder than I first thought. Second attempt, it uses Headbutt first, and I'm like, perfect, we can survive a Psychic and take it out, but then BAM, critical hit. <sighs> The fourth time we face it, thankfully, it hits itself in confusion three times in a row. Extraordinary indeed, my good sir. The next trainer has four psychic types, including three drowsies and a Kadabra. Thankfully, none of them get off a psychic move, so we can move on. The next trainer has a Sand Slash that uses four sand attacks, but we take it down with a crit. Next, an Arbok uses a Glare to paralyze, so we now have negative four accuracy and paralysis. Somehow, we luckily get by with just 23 HP on a paralyzed Zubat. Whew. Thinking we're pretty much in the clear, the last trainer actively switches out his Drowsy into a Hypno, and I'm like, ah! But thankfully, it just used Poison Gas and Disable. I guess this was just done to scare me, and I must admit, it, it totally worked. He also says, um, this after we defeat him? Okay. Critical hit! The battle against Koga starts off pretty strong for us, but then his muck uses Minimize, and Koga uses an X attack on it, and I'm like, oh god. But luckily, we do take it out eventually. His coughing then gets four or five smoke screens off on me to lower our accuracy crazily, and Koga uses two X attacks on it, but luckily we break through and take it out. This battle has already been so crazy, but then this happens. 
His Weezing uses Explosion and got a crit, taking out both itself and my Zubat, and I was like, w w wait, what? I sincerely did not know what to make of this. According to official VGC rules, yes, I researched this, if a battle ends through a move like Explosion, the user is technically the one who loses, meaning I suppose we did win. Given that Gen 1 doesn't operate by official VGC rules, in this battle the only reason we won was probably because other Pokemon merely existed in our party, but we never actually sent them out into battle, which was the one rule that we had. So given those two factors, we win our fifth gym badge, barely by a technicality. My god. We were having quite a smooth run of things, but now I'm getting an indication as to how things are going to be from now on, especially leading in towards a psychic type gym. Realizing how scary the rest of the game is going to be from this point and remembering how much money we lost from those losses in Koga's gym, I decide to tackle Route 15, 14, and 13, yes, in that order, which are to the east of Fuchsia City and which eventually link up to Route 12, where we got the Super Rod. There are so many trainers on these routes, I counted 29 in total, and we managed to get Zubat from level 58 to level 62. Not bad. Our next task is to go to Saffron City for the first time where we have to beat out Team Rocket from the Silphco building. Team Rocket, please get out of my building. This is a long process since there are so many floors and we do encounter some challenges like Hypno, Kadabra, and Magneton. At one point we even survive off of 3 HP. After finding a rare candy, healing up a few times, and finally locating the card key in a very tricky location, we arrive near the final room where Blue is found and, of course, wants to battle us. Like, dude, I'm trying to save the region from an evil organization, can you just wait until later? He now has 5 Pokemon and some new evolutions too, but overall the battle goes pretty well since luckily Pidgeot hurts itself in confusion and doesn't get to use Sand Attack. He also suddenly sent out a fully evolved Alakazam, but luckily we got a crit on it. His fully evolved Blastoise could have been a threat, but he repeatedly used Withdraw instead, so we make our way to the final room. I'm absolutely dreading the battle against Giovanni since he now has a Nidorino, Kangaskhan, Rhyhorn, and Nidoqueen, but we just barely beat him with 29 HP to spare. The world has been rescued. Next, I decide to go to the Fighting Dojo to get some relatively easy experience. Interestingly, the Fighting Dojo actually used to be the official gym in Saffron until Sabrina came and destroyed them and established her own gym. Since they're all fighting types and we do have wing attack, we're able to Oko everything, probably giving them flashbacks to when Sabrina did the same thing to them. The Karate Master pleads for us not to take his dojo's emblem, but instead to take a Pokemon, either his Hitmonchan or Hitmonlee. But Zubat and I are merciful souls. Except when it comes to battle, of course. We finally arrive at Sabrina's gym and I am terrified. One of the trainers justifies this fear with a slow bro that causes us some definite trouble. One trainer's haunter also puts us to sleep and uses Dream Eater and we almost die but survive with 17 HP since it is a super effective psychic move that I wasn't really expecting. After a long journey beating all of these psychic type trainers and having one heck of a time with her maze-like gym, we finally reach Sabrina. She first sends out a Kadabra which we're able to take out in one hit with Bite since its defense is so low. Her Mr. Mime survives our attack and uses super effective confusion on us which does some damage. She then sends out a Venomoth which we're able to take out in one hit with a super effective stab wing attack. Then the moment I've been fearing, her level 43 Alakazam. We do some great damage with Bite, but then it uses Psybeam and I'm like, oh, but we barely survive with 30 HP and take it out. If that thing had used Psychic, we would have had a much more difficult time, but we survived and made it out at level 69. Nice. On our way to Cinnabar Island, I decide to take out all the trainers on the water routes, Route 19 south of Fuchsia, Route 20 west of the Seafoam Islands, and Route 21 south of Pallet Town. A few of these trainers have cloisters, and these things provide us with immense trouble with super effective stab Aurora Beam, and it makes me fear our hopefully eventual Elite Four challenge for a particular reason. Traveling south from Pallet Town onto Route 21, this is the only place in the game you can find a Tangela. It took me forever to find this extremely rare and evidently endangered species. Let's kill it for good measure. Bruh. Towards the end of grinding, I encounter another Cloister Trainer which almost takes us out with an Aurora Beam, and then we encounter a Bird Trainer in the middle of the ocean. Seems legit. He brings us down to 5 HP, the closest we've come to fainting in a while. Thankfully, another trainer has some tentacle that we can use leech life on and get some health back. We reach Cinnabar with 36 HP after a ton of grinding and with Zubat now at level 73. On Cinnabar Island, the gym is locked for some reason, so we have to make our way through the Pokemon Mansion, which as a kid confused the absolute heck out of me. 
Okay, fine, it, it still does. This took a while. Just when you think you're starting to get towards the end, there are alternate exits and one leads back to the beginning of the whole mansion. Even though there's a trainer there that one would lead to believe defeating him would get you to the right exit, but instead you're supposed to actually take the easy way out? Ugh. In this mansion, there are also some powerful wild Pokemon up to level 40. It's just a terrible maze, but we finally get the secret key and it's time to get our 7th badge. Blaine, I'm not too concerned about. His Pokemon can be powerful, but it's neutral damage. The main thing that we had to worry about was getting a burn because it would be residual damage and it would cut our attack in half. Thankfully, we have an extremely lucky battle with no burns, a flinch on the Ponyta, his Rapidash only uses Growl, and his Arcanine did cause us some trouble, but we got a crit and a flinch from a bite attack before he just used Roar. Could have been challenging, but we made it through pretty easily thanks to some great luck. Before we make our way to Victory Road and the Pokemon League, we have to face our final gym, which is the one that was previously locked at the start of the game in Viridian City. This gym has now reopened suddenly so we can go challenge it. However, I'm super worried about this gym. It is a ground type gym, which means a lot of the Pokemon are likely to also have the rock type, which we can't damage much, and we're weak to. Thankfully, I've kept a secret weapon in our bag this whole time. TM21, which contains the grass type move Mega Drain given to us by Erica. Mega Drain being grass type means it's a special move, which isn't as good as physical attacks with Zubat, however, it is the only way we can do substantial damage to rock or ground types despite it only having 40 base power as well. And we get some health back when we use it. Hopefully it will help us out a lot. I had kept Leech Life until now thinking it would be helpful against Sabrina's Psychic Pokemon, but we didn't really need it, so now is the perfect time to swap it out, especially with some other upcoming challenges we have to face. Despite some challenging and powerful trainers in the gym, we make it to the gym leader who turns out to be none other than Giovanni himself, who now has a terrifying team of five Pokemon. Our battle starts off really well, and it turns out that Mega Drain is absolutely saving us. It one-hit KOs the Rhyhorn and nearly takes out the Dugtrio, but then it uses Sand Attack, and I'm like, oh god, that's not good. He then sends out Needle Queen, and we get paralyzed from Body Slam on top of our low accuracy. Despite this, we make it through the Needle Queen and Needle King with a half of our health left. He then sends in a level 50 Rhydon and I'm like, ooh, if this thing has rock type moves, hmm. But hopefully we can still outspeed and Mega Drain it, which might save us. But I just ran out of PP on Mega Drain and didn't notice. At this point I'm thinking, okay, don't, don't panic. Maybe we can just confuse it and still pull this off. But it uses Horn Drill, a one hit KO move with 30% accuracy and actually hits it. Oh boy, we lost. I try again with the same strategy, but this time without getting paralyzed and without losing power points, and thankfully we're able to defeat Giovanni, meaning we've now collected all eight gym badges with a Zubat. But the biggest challenge is yet to come. On our way to the Pokemon League gate, we run into our rival, and after all the battles we've had with him, I'm like, eh, this shouldn't be too challenging. Unfortunately, he gets Paralysis off with Execute and Leech Seed. He sends in Alakazam, now at level 50, and we stay paralyzed while he uses Reflect, which is going to lower our damage output. He then uses Psychic out of nowhere, and it does a ton, and I'm like, oh god, please help us hit our bite, please? But we don't, since he now outspeeds us, and he uses Psybeam to take us out. Wow. We are having some challenges towards the end of this game. Our rematch with Blue goes smoothly. The Pidgeot just uses Agility, no Paralysis this time, and Alakazam only uses Psybeam the first time, thankfully, which does over half, but we take it out with Bite. He then sends out his Blastoise and starts to use Skull Bash, but thankfully, Confuse Ray comes in clutch and causes him to hit himself in Confusion, then we get a crit and one more hit off while he powers up Skull Bash again to make it through. Phew. On to the Pokemon League Gate and Victory Road. In Victory Road, we face many challenges as all the trainers have Pokemon that are level 40 or higher, and many of them are quite threatening, like Hypno, Charizard, Persian, Arcanine, Blastoise, Kingler, Lapras, Lickitung, even one trainer with an Exeggutor that uses Hypnosis, and then he starts loading it up with X attacks. Then a Cloister, and this was the moment of truth to see how much I could do with Mega Drain now that I put it on Zubat. It does do a good amount, heals some of our HP, we luckily survive the Aurora Beam and manage to finish off the battle with low HP. A similar thing happens with a Dugong, which we very luckily get a high roll and take it out, or else we would have been a goner. The next trainer sends in a Chansey, and I'm like, oh god, why? 
I use Bite and it does a surprising amount since Chansey's physical defense is so low. Then I decide to use Mega Drain to heal up thinking it would take it out, but its special is so high that it survives and the trainer uses a Hyper Potion. Goodness gracious, this thing was so annoying, especially right after that dugong. I decide to find and take on Moltres in Victory Road for some extra experience as well, which was kind of dumb since I ran out of Bite power points, and it used Fire Spin which traps and does damage for like 5 turns, but thankfully I'm able to confuse it and take it out with a couple of wing attacks. With that, we have finished Victory Road and are headed for the ultimate test for Zubat the Elite Four, and Zubat is now at level 80. At this point, I decide to just deposit both Slowpoke and Farfetch since we have no use for them anymore. Zubat is entirely on his own now, and I have no idea if the Elite Four is even possible with just a Zubat, but we're about to find out. I first just get right into it to test out their strategies against Zubat, how well we fare against them, and what strategies we can use. Lorelei is the first Elite Four member, and she is easily one of the top five trainers I feared when thinking about where this challenge would take us, and and as it turns out, this was for good reason. She starts with a level 54 dugong and I use Mega Drain against it. It immediately goes into rest and I'm like, oh, okay, we're playing it this way. We better confuse this thing. Thankfully, after a couple of Mega Drains, it hurts itself in confusion and I'm like, hey, this isn't looking too bad. She then sends out a Cloister, which also hits itself in confusion and Mega Drain does a ton. It hits itself in confusion again, but then I decide to go for Bite, thinking it would take it out so that we can save some Mega Drain power points, but it just barely survives, snaps out of confusion, and hits us hard with a super effective Aurora Beam. She next sends out a Slowbro and I'm like, oh gosh, we finally don't get an Ice type, but it has super effective effective psychic type. Everything she has is stacked against Zubat. At least it has the water type, so we hit it with a Mega Drain to restore health. As it turns out, her Slowbro just likes to spam Amnesia to raise its special defense, so I have to switch to Bite to get decent damage off and take it out. Next, she sends in Jinx, which is literally Zubat's worst nightmare. Two super effective types against us. Thankfully, Bite does do a lot of damage since Jinx's defense is so low, but her Ice type moves really do hurt. Finally, Lorelei's Lapras comes in. Mega Drain hardly does anything, it uses Blizzard, and we are instantly wiped out. This thing is looking like it's going to be very difficult, and to be honest, we had very good luck during this first attempt. As much as I want immediate revenge, I realize that if we're struggling against the first Elite Four member this hard, beating the entire thing is going to be impossible. So I head to Victory Road to do some grinding, because I don't want to keep losing money just in case we have to break the rules and buy some items to see if this is even remotely possible. But I'll be damned if we don't try this without items. I spent about four hours grinding up Zubat in Victory Road. It was brutal, and I make it to level 86 where we try again. I don't want to use any rare candies yet since I want to save them for when leveling up is the hardest at the very last levels. After some good luck and strategy, I make it to the Lapras again, but lose to another Blizzard. On the next attempt, I go right for Confuse Ray, but it breaks through and kills me again, even though we were so close that time. I try again, but this time I have bad luck with the beginning Pokemon and lose to the Jinx. On the fifth try, I luckily make it through the Dugong with full health, get a Confusion hit and a crit on the Cloister to maintain full health, beat the Slowbro with no problem, confuse the Jinx, have it hit itself, and take it out with Bite, and at this point I'm like, okay, the time is now. We have reached the Lapras with full health. This will never happen again. I confuse it right off the bat, and it hits the Blizzard. Ouch. The next turn I use Mega Drain to heal up some health, and I get a critical hit. It then hurts itself in confusion on top of that so I can use Mega Drain again and heal up more health again. This thing amazingly survives at like 2 HP, breaks through confusion, and uses Blizzard. But I'm like, after all the Mega Drain health we've gotten back, we're not in knockout range. We're okay. But then, it gets a crit. At this point, I'm like, okay, that was an ideal run and we still couldn't beat her. So I grind out one more level in Victory Road and finally decide to bust out the good old rare candies, which we have nine of, bringing us to level 97. You guys know how this battle works now. Super tedious and we have to get super lucky, but thankfully we do. I managed to get the Jinx at full health and use Bite, thinking it might now take it out since we're at such a high level, but it doesn't by like 1 HP. It then uses Ice Punch and freezes us and takes us out because we don't thaw out. 
I'm really wanting to cry, but I give it one last shot. I make it to the Jinx and take it out, but I do take an ice punch along the way. I'm sitting there like, geez, can we really take out Lapras when we have any damage? So I confuse it, it luckily hits itself in confusion and I can use Mega Drain to gain back some health, and it crits. Then it hurts itself in confusion again, I use Mega Drain and finish the Lorelei battle off with full health. Oh my god, it's done. But there's still a long way to go. The next trainer is Bruno and I figured he actually might not be that bad since we can counter everything he has quite well now that we have Mega Drain. He sends out Onyx to start which we take out in one hit with Mega Drain. He then sends out Hitmonchan and I'm actually worried about this because I do remember it having the elemental punches, Ice Punch and Thunder Punch which would mess us up pretty good. Thankfully we one hit KO both his Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee with Stab Super Effective Wing Attack and then Mega Drain his second Onyx. Now he sends out his Machamp, his last Pokemon, and I'm like, oh god, I'm not sure if we can take this thing out in one hit, and we don't, but thankfully it just uses Leer. Second Elite Four member down, and we are at full health. I can't believe it. The third Elite Four member is Agatha, and I was slightly concerned about not being able to use Bite against her Ghost types, but they do have weak defense, and Wing Attack is almost as good when considering stab damage. Also, some of her Ghosts have the Hypnosis and Dream Eater combination, which is super effective against us. She starts with her Gengar, which actually survives a wing attack scarily well, but thankfully it just uses Nightshade. Whew, a Hypnosis could have very well ended us. Gengar goes down to a second wing attack, and she sends in Golbat. How fitting. Zubat, show him your power. Haunter comes in next, and I'm like, ooh, we might not one-hit KO this thing, which we don't, and it uses Hypnosis, and I'm like, no, but it doesn't work. Holy goodness, this is terrifying. Arbok is no problem with a couple of bites, and then the level 60 Gengar comes in. Wing attack does slightly over half, and then the dumb thing uses Toxic. So we can then take it out, and that is Agatha down. I could not believe this at all. But Lance is next, and we have no idea how we're going to deal with him. Lance starts with his Gyarados first, and Bite is looking like it will be a 3-hit KO. Hydro Pump does quite a lot, and Lance uses a Hyper Potion. Thankfully, Leer misses, which would have been really bad, and Dragon Rage takes us below half before we finally take that thing out. Next comes a Dragonair, and thankfully we get a one-hit KO from a critical hit. Unbelievable. The next Dragonair just comes in and uses agility, so we take it out with ease. Aerodactyl then comes in, and I'm thinking, oh, this is the end. There's just no way. I use Mega Drain despite it not being very effective merely because I have nothing else to use on this thing and we need all the health that we can get. It then uses Takedown which doesn't actually do a whole lot and I decide to confuse it which does work. Then Lance uses a Hyper Potion on it but it's looking like we're going to get off some good health recovery in the process. Then it hits a Super Sonic which is not good at all and it breaks out of confusion. We hurt ourselves in confusion, take a Takedown, Hurt ourselves in confusion again, take another takedown, and I'm like, man, oh man, this, this is the end. This is it. But we finally break out of confusion at the last moment and take it out with a Mega Drain. And then comes in the Dragonite. Now I'm looking at this situation, like how in the hell are we going to be able to take down a level 62 Dragonite with 60 HP on a Zubat? So I decide to confuse it, and it hits itself in confusion, thank god. I use Bite to see how much it will do, and it's not much. It thankfully uses Agility, I hit it again, then it uses Barrier. Oh my god, we, we did it. Had it decided to use an attacking move at any point, we were toast. That was lucky. Wondering what in the world is going on and how we've made it so far in this magical mystery tour, I'm like, okay, we have 60 HP on a Zubat and we're about to face the champion. This is over, plain and simple, but I decide to challenge nonetheless, if only for the experience. The champion, of course, turns out to be Blue, our rival, who starts with his infamous Pidgeot. I go straight for Confuse Ray and it breaks through and uses Mirror Move, which reflects the confusion back onto me. Holy goodness, is this ever the end of us? I break through the confusion and use Bite and it hits us with Wing Attack and I'm like, oh god, save us. Our confusion suddenly ends though and I go for another Bite, get the flinch miraculously and take it out on the next turn. Blue next sends out his Alakazam and I'm like, yep, might as well reset this game right now. I use Confuse Ray, it hits itself in confusion, after which I use Bite and get a crit. What is happening? He sends out the Rhydon next to them like, no way, no way. I use Mega Drain and get a ton of health back, after which he sends in Arcanine. I confuse it, 
It hits itself in confusion. I use bite. It gets off an ember, but thankfully no burn. I hit another bite, and it breaks through confusion and uses ember again, but then I can finally take it out. Blue next sends in Exeggutor, and I'm like, oh god, one hit with Psychic and I am done for. Luckily, it hits itself in confusion, and Wing Attack does do a lot of damage, but then it goes for Hypnosis and misses. <laughs> One more wing attack finishes it off. Blastoise comes out and I'm like, how are we on the last Pokemon? I use Mega Drain and it gets a crit, but then he uses Blizzard and we survive on 69 HP. 69, yes. Before using another Mega Drain to take it out. Did this... did this actually happen? I was stunned after this. We took a Zubat into the Indigo Plateau, couldn't make it past even the first Elite Four member for like 10 attempts, didn't use a single item throughout the entire run, somehow made it to the champion on 60 HP, and then beat him to win the game. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. We beat Pokemon Red and Blue with just a Zubat. Well, there you have it folks, I hope you guys enjoyed this journey as much as I did. Frustrating and as tedious as it was in some points, this was a really fun challenge and the sense of accomplishment afterwards and being able to share it with all of you definitely made it worth it. If you did enjoy this challenge, please be sure to let me know by leaving a like and commenting a favorite moment of yours down below or other challenges you'd like to see me do. If we hit, say, 5,000 likes on this video, I would definitely be down to do another one of these. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell to turn on notifications so you're ready for the next one. If you guys enjoy my content, please be sure to check out my other videos and consider supporting on Patreon to get some cool perks. The link will be appearing at the top of your screen in the iCard above. Thank you all for watching, this has been Sil Spectre, and I'll see you guys next time for some more Pokemon content.